professional television angler Bill Dance made an appearance today at Bass Pro Shop. Dance says he has thrown the line in the water in our neck of the woods many times. And he says here, just like anywhere else, success comes with experience. Dance has had his own fishing show on television for 34 years. Well, as you saw here on KSLA, our sports team covered Super Bowl 38 in Houston. It was a lot of work, but also a lot of fun. Take a look as we bring you part two of our journey behind the scenes at the Super Bowl. Bringing us even more reasons to enjoy tonight, sports and stuff. Thank you. Plenty to tell you about. David Toms played rounds two and three in the Accenture Match Play Championship. We'll tell you how he did. Well, I will tell you, Michelle, as you said, two days and counting until the LSU Tigers and the Oklahoma Sooners square off in the BCS National Championship Sugar Bowl. Now, there's been some controversy as to whether or not the BCS Championship will actually be a national title game, especially with USC, who is ranked number one in both the AP and the coaches poll, beating Michigan so easily in yesterday's Rose Bowl. Now, Head coach of the Tigers, Nick Saban, says he has absolutely no doubt that his Tigers are playing for the national championship and that his Tiger team is absolutely ready to hit the field and play the Oklahoma Sooners. Now, you will hear from the Oklahoma side of the ball later on in this broadcast when Bob Griffin joins you in sports. Michelle, I'm going to send it back to you, and I will see you later on in the broadcast. All right. Thanks, Anaya. Yeah, I'm going to load up my credit card. <laughs> can I borrow a little money? If I had it, some, I can have a Sonic you. right here in the deal. I, just I know. Can over. you believe that? It's right over there, Sonic. Yeah, so, yeah. so you can come Come and, and, Put and cheese coaties. <laughs> while you shop, while you, while shop. you shop. And according to these guys, this is no sport for sissies. Hey, Bob, with less than 24 hours left until Super Bowl 38, the Carolina Panthers and the New England Patriots finished their final walkthroughs. Now, the Carolina Panthers are a seven point underdog and going into their very first ever Super Bowl. The New England Patriots, on the other hand, are Super Bowl savvy and looking for their 15th straight win this season. Now, we spoke to several NFL players who are not playing in this particular game. We asked their opinions of Super Bowl 38, and this is what we found out. George Foreman Sr. is discussing a return to the boxing ring, and he has said his reason for doing so would be to prove that age is just a state of mind. Now, I had the opportunity to sit down with George Foreman's oldest son, George Jr. I asked him what he thought about his dad's possible return to boxing at age 55. George Foreman Jr. says never doubt his father. But you don't want your dad to get hit in the head. Though. Join us tonight at 10 for my interview with George Foreman Jr. You'll find out if his dad really does cook on the grill and what the deal is with naming all his kids George. That's tonight on News 12 at 10. Okay, you didn't sort it out for us. Which George is he? George? He is the oldest. He is the George's oldest. oldest son. He has one sister who is older than he is. And okay. we'll go through the list of all of them, too. And they, well, I'll explain she's all that. The, he's the original George Foreman Jr. He is the Jr., original then. George Jr., okay. yes. 29? 29 years 29. old. 29. Mm -hmm. Is there anything yeah. so far that you would have done differently or you would change? I wish I could undo some of the early parts of my career. Uh, the dumb image, um, the immaturity part just drives me nuts. It's one time this year we had basketball, t-ball, and soccer all going at the same time. What do you think of your dad being such a hot shot on the <laughs> golf course? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about that? I don't know that he knows what to think about it. You know, I, Hi, Shreveport. We're here to squeeze our buns right here in Louisiana. For somebody who's not used to driving in all of this gear here, it, that's a tough thing to do. It really is. Think you have good balance? Just try getting on one of these things. Rolla Bola is not as easy as it may seem. This is hard. Another five minutes you're going to stay. Another five minutes my <laughs> rear end. Training to be a successful defensive tackle at LSU takes hard work, determination, and strength. And in a workout, flexibility is key to preventing injury. So the first thing Dawson does is stretch. Work it out, work it out. And then it's time for the workout. What I'm about to do, I'm about to take it through the workout. You build strength and muscle, but you also need to build something else. I'm trying to build explosion, hip explosion. Quickness, power, you know, football is a game of collision, a lot of explosion, a lot of quickness. And to build explosion, you do what's called a power clean. If, if you think about it, you won't do it. <laughs> Abdominals are also important for strength, and Byron uses a medicine ball to strengthen his stomach and back muscles. It was a challenge for me. Byron had to spot my feet to keep me from falling backwards. And another thing that it obviously takes to become a successful tackle at LSU is size. 
Just for grins, we decided to see how my size ranks with that of Byron's. The size of Byron's quadricep or thigh muscle was 29 inches. Mine, 17. Byron's bicep or upper arm, 19 and a half. Mine, 9. Byron's waist, 42. Mine, 21. And my hands don't match up either. Byron wears a size 16 ring. I myself, 3 and 3 quarters sized. This pretty much said it all. I'd get flattened if I tried to play football against these guys, so I'll just stick to what I know best, watching the game and introducing these warriors to you.